Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we're going to be drawing this little vampire guy. He's out trick-or-treating. Uh, 2020 has been pretty wild, so you may or may not get to go trick-or-treating this year. I apologize if you don't get to. But anyway, this guy is getting to trick-or-treat because he's just on paper, and he doesn't have to worry about things. So uh, follow along. I'm going to show two different ways of doing the legs. Uh, so if you don't like what I do initially, uh, hang on one second and you'll see how to make the pant legs. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and have fun. Let's get right to it. I'm going to start my vampire with two little oval eyes. I like that. And I, I kept them fairly close together. They're, um, if you flipped one sideways, the other one's about that that length apart. The height of this eye flipped sideways is where the next one is. Then I'm going to put a letter C on its side for a little upturned nose there. And after that I'm going to make the mouth. Uh, you can make it a slight smile. I'm actually going to give it a slight frown, I think. So pretty much just a straight line across with a very slight downward turn on either end. And right under that I'm going to put two letter V's to make the fangs. And next I'm going to make his hairline. Uh, vampires typically have a widow's peak where it comes down in the middle. So I'm kind of going to start about here and here. So those are going to be the where the ears will be, and his hair is going to come up and down. This is almost like a sideways letter B, or a number three turned on its end, like that. And I'm not thrilled with where my point came. I would have wanted it a little more in the middle of his eyes, but that's all right. Then I'm going to give him some very tiny eyebrows up in the air like that. And then we'll give him his ears next. So it's just a letter C and a backwards letter C, and then a quick kick of the pen on either ear. And then I'm going to give him his chin, and we'll make it come down pretty skinny here. And he still needs the top of his hair, so all we made was the hairline. So I'm going to come back in here. And you can decide if you want to come straight across. I might actually give him a little alfalfa uh, hair back at his cowlick. Kind of making like a little kid trick-or-treating version of a vampire. Uh, next I'm going to make the neck. Just two quick lines, nice and skinny. And then we'll do a bow tie here. So I'm starting with a circle or a, a little square even. And then quick line out. And somewhere between a triangle and a heart shape on its side. And then to keep our vampire costume going, we're going to make the high collar on the cloak, like that. So just two quick lines up and basically a rainbow going behind them for the top of the collar. And next I'm going to make his shoulders. Whoop, that was bigger than I wanted it. I kicked the pen a little too far, about like that. And you can decide how tall you want to make your vampire. I might actually make this one kind of short, like it's a really little kid. Um, so I'm going to have my cape come down to about here. Here. 
and you can choose if you want the cape closed in front of him where his arms are hidden you could just make two vertical lines right here and then connect over to the edges I'm going to do one arm visible and one side of the cape hanging so for the arm that's visible I'm going to do this with the cape so that his arm can poke out and I'll have his arm coming down right about here and vampires tend to be well dressed so I'm going to give them a nice button down shirt cuff there and then we'll make his hand holding a trick-or-treat bucket one of those little pumpkin ones that's the kind I had when I was a kid I always thought it was pretty cool All my friends used pillowcases, which held a lot more candy, so kudos to anybody that's out there doing that. I had the little jack-o'-lantern bucket. So I'm making the handle, and then I'm going to just make an oval right here, turn sideways. Now right now it almost looks like he's wearing, uh, holding an iron um, to keep his nice dress clothes pressed. So to make it not an iron, but a jack-o'-lantern. I'm now going to put a couple parentheses right here. And then just kind of round off the bottom here. You don't want it to be totally flat, but you also don't want it to be a ball because these jack-o'-lantern buckets are kind of flat on the bottom so they can stand upright without toppling over. And then we can make a jack-o'-lantern face on there. mine that I had when I was a kid this was colored in black so that's what I'm going to do there you could also draw some candy up here I'm actually just going to do a little bit of shading so you can tell that parts further away so that was the hard stuff right there that hand and the bucket so now that that's done the rest will be a piece of cake for you even though we're supposed to be collecting candy so we're going to make a straight line down for this cape and then connect it and next we'll do his legs so I'm making two lines like that you can decide if you want to give him pant legs or just give him little tiny toothpick legs a lot of times I will make legs like this where He's just kind of teetering on nothing. Um, I like making legs like that. They're kind of inspired by uh, Oliver Jeffers, one of my favorite illustrators. He doesn't even do this much. He would have stopped after those lines down. That would have been the legs. Uh, he does a detailed um, head next to nothing on the torso, and the arms and legs are just little noodles, which is pretty fun. Um, so you can decide if you if you like that look great if you want to make actual pant legs you can do actual pant legs um, I'll kind of scribble this in to cover up my original one so that you can tell what's pant legs and what's not Um, if you did the little toothpick legs, you can leave it as just that. If you did pant legs, now you're going to need to draw shoes, too. Um, we can just do some quick little... Uh, those are kind of like Charlie Brown feet. Uh, it's just a quick oval. It's almost like a small Italian bread loaf for a foot. And then... Uh, we're going to finish his cape back here and if you made his cape lower than where his legs are connecting then you want to make sure that it continues behind him like that and the only other thing I'm gonna do is make a little mark here to separate his 
arm from his torso. And if you wanted to make some buttons going down here to separate it a little bit, you could do that as well. And then he just needs a little bit of a shadow. I'm just going to kind of do a quick squiggly shadow. And then put a line behind him for the ground. You could make him standing at a doorstep or put some trees behind him, whatever you want. You could also make some bats. Um, so I'm going to start with kind of a letter V. Then a smaller letter V for the ears. And on this bat, I'm going to then turn my V into kind of a letter M. And then we'll do a couple. That's almost like drawing a seagull far away. If you've ever done that, I'm sure you have. So we'll make a couple of bats flying around him. Um, if you're drawing several bats, it's kind of important to draw each one a little bit differently because they'd be at various stages of flight. So this is going to be the ears of the next one. So I started with this inner V shape. And then we'll make a couple wings kicked out there. And then again, just sort of that seagull flying shape colored in. Add a little bit of a bump there where the body is, and we've got another bat. And then we can make one more quick one. Again, start with, that's kind of, you can either start with the letter V or just make a really smushed letter M. Couple seagulls, color it in, add those bat ears, and we've got some bats for our trick-or-treating vampire. All right, so here is our finished vampire. Uh, he's out ready to trick or treat. I hope you had fun following along step by step. Uh, you can make as many bats as you want. Bats are fun to make and they're super quick. You can make any scene a little spookier if you want by just making a bunch of bats and they take like five seconds each. Um, hope you had fun and tune in again next time for another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. All right, kids, now that you've finished your doodles, color them in and then share them with both Mike Page and Medfield TV. We're going to take those images and we're going to put them all over our station. Can't wait to see what you guys make.